Kiitoksia. Seuraavaksi meillä on kiinout puheenvuoro. Megamind on tekniska museetin kaikki aikojen suurin ja monimutkaisin kehitystyö. Ja meille tulee siitä tänne puhumaan Mariana Back, internetikuraattori, Eva Gustafsson, yhteistyön päällikkö ja Anna Velander Gisleen tiedottaja tekniska museetista Tukholmasta. Olkaa hyvä. to hear some music here. Anybody recognize that music? Well, there's something very special with this music. It's composed in a way that we know now that it affects our brain. You've heard about the Mozart effect. True, maybe. Anyway, music affects us a lot. Thank you. Um, I'm Mariana. These are my colleagues. Hi, I'm Anna uh, Velander Gislin. Hi, I'm Eva Gustafsson. Yeah, and this is our place where we work. Anybody recognize that? Have you been there? Hands up. Some of you has mm -hmm. visited this place. Where is it? Yeah, it's in Stockholm. And actually, it's very, very close to where we're at. It's just like a little distance of water between us. So it's an easy task for you to go from here to Stockholm and see the exhibition we're going to tell you about. So this is the museum, Science Museum, National Museum of Science and Technology in Stockholm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we've been there some time. We're quite old, but uh, what you find in the museum is not that old. We have moved from uh, being a place for old male engineering towards an everyday kind of technical life aspect uh, towards families and younger audience uh, that you find of also technical aspects of today. Uh, so, uh, next on, Eva. Yes, and this is an illustration of our new exp exhibition, our new science center, Megamind. And it's not what it really looks like, but it's in the mood of Megamind. And our main or our general target group for this exhibition or for the whole museum is families with children, schools and teachers. Yeah, and uh, except that, we also have extended target groups because, of course, we also want to uh, talk with everyone, actually, no matter what uh, background you have. So we also work with uh, reaching out to children and young people with different uh, kind of aspects that uh, uh, want them to feel welcome at the museum with functional abilities, disability organizations and other authorities in, in the business that we want to work together with. So, uh, and this is because the main goal for us is to, uh, of course, stimulate and uh, the interest of uh, no, no knowledge seeking to, to technology and science uh, as we want to be an inspirational place for that. Uh, make science culture accessible for all. And that's what we're going to talk about here today and move towards to be uh, every little genius favorite place because that's uh, 
that would be really fun to inspire all. It should be a place where you can find inspiration. Uh, we want to be innovative, uh, where you can find a place to, to gather uh, entrepreneurship and uh, find uh, knowledge and inspiration for that. Keep this slide for just a second. Okay. Yeah, and we'll read that little back, that little quote yeah. again. A place for inspiration, creativity, learning, innovation, and entrepreneurship. This is words we live with every day. And the museum is, is quite old. It was started in the 30s, but a few, uh, as the first science and technology museum in Stockholm. But then later on, we you started. I thank you. You only have one uh, flipper. Um, we were inspired by the phenomena of the science centers that started in the uh, US in the mid 60s. And this is a picture from Exploratorium, some, um, uh, uh, the place for fine arts. And you are probably familiar, might be familiar with Frank Oppenheimer, who was the father of these institutions that then spread all over the world. And now you can see science centers at very many places. I think the one of them that you are probably very familiar with is in Hurika in, in Vanta, right? Hands up if you know Hurika. I have been there, yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> that's my guess. That's a very, very nice example of a science center where you learn by hands-on doing and you learn by taking part in experiences and it is tactile and it stimulates uh, your thinking. And uh, if you look at this picture, you can see one of the installations in uh, Exploratorium San Francisco then has also been shown at many other places. The top uh, picture to the right there, the left in from your, uh, you can see, yeah, what is it you can see? picture up in the corner here. <laughs> Can you figure it out? What it is? What do you say? What can you see up there? It's hard to tell? Well, give me a guess. Those in the, cor the upper corner. What can you see? You see people. Okay. What else? Can everybody see the people there? Well, take a close look at them, and then all of a sudden, what happens? Right? Tricky, isn't it? Then all of a sudden, you see pillars, don't you? So this kind of mind games have been um, very used uh, in, in the kind of exhibitions that science centers uh, deals with. And you see the mirror effect and effects and so on. <coughs> this is one where I'm going to ask you now, and now you really have to steam up a little bit and like pump up, because now you're going to say these words that is written there in the same phase the whole group. So you use this phase, dan, 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 and you start now. Oh, big applause. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, okay, let's try this. Same pace, and then you tell the color of the word you see. One, two, three. Here we go. That wasn't that easy, was it? So what goes on is that your brain is so used to see words, most of you. Of course, if you're very small and you don't know to how to read yet and so on, but not thinking about that right now, then we just know that our brain immediately takes in the information about a word because that's like a picture. So when you ask it something else, it has to move around and ask all kind of areas in your head before it finally concludes, ah, that is blue. 
but it says the word yellow or whatever it is. And I think this is a very good example and useful example for those of us that have no problem with reading in general. But imagine that you have these kind of um, disabilities to, to see the picture of the word. And you always have to start looking around in your head for what does it say. And in all situations, I think that's a little useful information to many of us. And when we started to work with, with uh, Mega Mind, we kept this very much in, in our mind that we don't, we are not the same. We have the same needs and all that, you know, but we are not the same. And everybody needs to, uh, needs to be uh, exposed to the information we want to, to give. And therefore, we had a um, very large work with co-creation and it was experts it was uh, teacher it was uh, students it was uh, groups with small children people with different kind of abilities and all sorts of of groups we started working with and i'm going to show you a little bit how we worked and worked and worked and worked and worked <laughs> with these things brought in groups sat together and and then finally we concluded that we need to make an exhibit that is for everyone, and we're going to create it together. So, device is together and for all, always, always, all the time. This is a way to show togetherness. And if you look at the uh, top left corner, you can see how we made sculptures uh, that were just to test. And then uh, from that, we tested again. They came back. We changed them, and we call this our iteration pro pro project, where we changed from one thing to another. We wanted to achieve confidence with those who took part in the in this um, in these tests, and then, then later on, everybody who visited the exhibition. And is there one lead word besides all this? It is plasticity about the uh, capability for the brain to actually move like you do when you train in a, in a gym with your body. You can actually train your brain. That's what w is nowadays called plasticity or neuroplasticity, where everybody should know that I can change my brain by affecting it in different ways, by doing, uh, exposing myself to different things. So this is very, very central in our exhibition, too. And we worked a lot with teachers. Teachers helped us to see a lot of things. Yes. Yes, I do want it. Yeah, you do need <laughs> that one. Yeah. Right. And uh, it does, it's a good thing that teachers helped us to do this because we had a lot of teachers at our museum together with their school classes. And the teachers have a lot of challenges in their everyday life at school. One challenge is to have access to inspiring laboratory materials for the teaching. Another challenge is to have access to inspiring environment for learning. And the time for out-of-school activities and also to be fun and to have fun. Those are things that are challenging for teachers. Now, we have taken that into consideration and tried to develop activities and environments at the museum, at our science center, Megamind, to make sure that the teachers really get that they can come to us without losing time for the ordinary uh, work at school. And it's supposed to be obvious for them how they can use us for their education. And we have to think about all the challenging pupils that the teachers have too. They have pupils in their classrooms with different 
uh, disabilities, di different difficulties that they have to uh, adapt to in their everyday life, and we had to think about that too. So we th created the scaffolding house, uh, and that's just the roof. Now you're going to see the pillars that the roof rests on. The first pillar is language. Many children have different difficulties with language. Uh, some of them because they don't know Swedish as well as they <laughs> need to to understand the education. And uh, some of them just because they have difficulties understanding language. So we have to find ways to support them in their use of and understanding of language. Uh, and then we have the memory part. Many children have difficulties in remembering uh, what you tell them from one second to the other. So we have to find ways to make sure that what we tell them is something that they also can remember for the next step of the educational process. And then we have concentration. It's hard to concentrate for many, many children and for some children in special. So we have to find ways in how to deal with that in the exhibition and in the educational activities. And we have different ways to work. We can work in different ways in our activities. And we have to make sure that those ways are ways that all children can participate in. And the use of time. It's hard if you are in a, a, an experiment, right in between an experiment, and you, you're not really finished, and the time runs out. It's very hard to know when the time is running out if you're very concentrated or very into what you're doing. So we have to help the children understand how long time do they have, and when does, does that time end, so that they don't end up getting frustrated. And also conversation. Children need, often need support in how to conversate, converse, no, to talk to each other. <laughs> uh, so that the, it leads forward and they don't get stuck in the, how they talk to each other. So that's the, the scaffolding house, all the pillars that the roof of education leans on in our science center. Now we have to be relevant, interesting, inspiring and fun for teachers and for the children to make them come to us because we know that we are good for them and we want them to come to us to see that. So how do we do? Yes, we tell them what we learn at the science center and how we learn it. And that is because I know and we know that how we learn things is a very big part of what you learn. And we use the, the word STEM or STEAM. Uh, all science centers uh, all over the word, world use the word STEM. S-T-E-M, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And now we and many others have added the the A for art, to really note that art is a very important part of how you learn. With art and artistic activities, you learn a lot better than you do without it. Yeah, and this is, this is also a part of equality, I would say, and justice, because we're not the same. And some learn in one way, and some learn in other ways. And we have learned, many have learned, that arts and music and so on is very, very important. And many will steam from that. And uh, within parentheses, we visited a wonderful workshop yesterday where music, sound, and touch was very, very uh, central in the whole experience we had. So thank you. And um, um, we, of course, then used this when we had our um, co-creation groups. 
And in these groups, we had people in all ages and small groups and large groups and long time and short time. And we checked out what made them go, what they thought was fun. And um, uh, we also, we also tested, this was very much with schools, these pictures you saw, but we also tested with families during weekends, makerspace. Um, this is where you come to the museum and you do a lot of fun and interesting things. And um, this was a way for us to see how the children could influence and be our developers of what we were going to eventually show in our exhibition. And a lot of what was uh, found out here was not absolutely exactly the kind of um, program we would run, but we also learned a lot on how they interact and what they think is fun and so on. Um, so families, and then we had, we had um, actual uh, formal um, evaluations of what they thought about it. So there is a lot of different kinds of evaluation, both is like happy mouth and, and you know, um, just three levels of, of uh, their interest shown, but also interviews, deep interviews, and uh, also sheet where they fill in their, their thoughts about what they had experienced. Yeah, <coughs> so what did we learn from this? A lot, I'd, I would say. Uh, we have, uh, this is, was an uh, extreme uh, opportunity to get all the, those people involved, and I have to add something. I think it's extraordinary. 200 children were part of uh, helping out to create and develop this science center at the museum. 500 uh, children tested and tested and tested again to make it as uh, near the goal uh, to be 100% for all as possible. And uh, all those children uh, gained, uh, together with us, the knowledge to be really uh, you have something, some things that this about different circumstances, uh, but the same needs and everyone that needs uh, the same thing and also dare to challenge in the same way. So here uh, we have today uh, at the museum, uh, with, with the brain you also need rest, but it also need physics. So we have uh, obstacle uh, uh, where you can uh, challenge yourself, but also the brain, and you can enter that also if you need uh, a wheelchair. And you have a road uh, painted on the floor in the museum to, to guide you where you can go, how you can enter it. And the middle line is tactile, and this road also helps to uh, take down all the influences, because it happens a lot, obviously, in a museum, to make it more safe, uh, for those who need an, an, a road to enter, to follow in the museum. And as uh, you, you heard about uh, adding art uh, to it, that was also a thought in it. So we had the, the, the technology to be really uh, creative and nice in an artistic way also when we did uh, the technical things. Uh, to enter it, you also need to know where to go and how you, you proceed in the exhibition. We have maps that's uh, with colors and uh, they are tactile and there's much, much work behind those together with the co-creation teams to be as inclusive and accessible as possible. We also have them in smaller versions that you can bring with you when you enter if you want to have them as safety along the road. Uh, and this is the information system. Uh, this is uh, developed thanks to PTS, Post and Communication Authority in Sweden, uh, that uh, made it possible to do this. Here you have lots of information of what the installation is. We have 43 installations in the exhibition, and every single one has the information about what it is, how you should use it, and what, it, uh, what kind of effects it has on the brain, and also examples to make it more visible to what, what uh, happens in the ordinary day life to, to really <laughs> understand how it could affect you. And this is, uh, you have it in sign language, you can listen to it, uh, you have it in uh, different kind of colors and different sizes of the text to make it as accessible 
for everyone. All of the information are in those formats, everyone. And you also have it in symbol language for those who can't really uh, read a long text in this environment. So this is a really great way that we have gained a lot of uh, positive feedback from visitors from, as it's very inclusive to have all those kind of formats. It's an easy start to just have a, like an iPad, but it's what you fill it in w with, right? D that ma makes it so uh, accessible. So, yeah, I you would say take that on a very very short tour in Megamind. We will do that. I would say the information system is like a scaffolding for the whole exhibition. You can find it all around, like, this, it, it is described, like, 43 different installations that you can experience, and all of them have this kind of information. And as Anna promised, we're going to have a quick walk through Megamind, which you were there, but let's see what you could find when, if you get. We enter through a big ear, and this is reflecting uh, information we had from smaller children that really are fascinated by scales to become small, you know, Alice in Wonderland and all these things that are based on that. So you kind of enter a totally different environment and this is supposed to create associations to the brain. And when you come into what we call the central, then um, you can see it is shaped a little bit like a brain. It's not like we're walking in an anatomic like described brain, it's it's an association to IDs and thoughts, and uh, you can see how it's curved the floor and in its ceiling we have uh, signals that are quickly running like neurons in your brain and so on, and this is to to um, try to give the impression that uh, you shall understand the the information in your own body, how that is delivered, and there you have. Uh, such an example as synapses that you can dance and and activate them. And this is kind of an... Um, ex the whole exhibition is set up like this, that uh, on one side it is about more about brain and learning. In the center uh, you saw some pictures from that, and on the other side it's about body and activity. And here's a couple of pictures from body and activity which is very important for the brain to be this is to be activized and then um, um, then on the other side of of uh, this uh, layout we have the the exhibition where we actually did the most work and uh, you can see it laid out like this and if you look at this image of like sketches I don't know, is there a way to point it? I don't know. It could I don't know if I can point. Otherwise, I have to tell you again. You can see the first curved part where um, you start. And you can imagine that this is like massaging your brain. Like the first part is all about gathering and collecting. So you can see and experience, you can hear and you can touch and you can feel in this part. Then you move over to the upper left corner. Okay, so we moved from uh, this part and through a dark corridor. Uh, for those of you that, that knows about dialogue in the dark, it's a way like like trans transporting in a yourself in a very dark area here, and then you come out in another part here, which is a little bit confusing and is meant to be, because that's how your brain works. You collect, you gather, then you're confused, but then eventually you sort out the crap that you don't need, and then from there you can start and being creative and, and do things uh, with your information. And the whole part here is about that, create. Uh, this whole floor is in a way made to prepare you for the next floor where you shall be very innovative and creative. So the next floor, um, level two here, is about innovations. And you meet innovators like uh, 
not for real, but you can see the results of their innovations. And it's also about how we manage to, with our creative brain, uh, make things such as uh, uh, space programs possible. And then from there, from there, um, you can also look into what's new today with, um, uh, with the way we can look into our inner space. So it's kind of outer space and inner space. So you can see here uh, a few pictures from what I just described in the sketch. This is rest till you get smart. This is where you can start. You need to reflect. This is see with other eyes. This is touch and feel and try to guess. This is, well, I don't, we don't know what the scream as loud as you can and see how that affects you. And this is the room I told you about where you can get a bit confused, but you should know that that's good. Out of confusion comes clari clarity. And in this room, you can, you can create from different, different kinds of ways. And we have tried as much as possible to make the installation in such a way that you can do it in, in any, without uh, hesitating, even if you're in a wheelchair. If you are hearing impaired, then we have made sure that the installation is vibrating very strongly or it is warm or something like that that gives you an, an impression and an um, experience, I would say. Uh, so, this uh, I have to just admit here, thank you, Mariana, because we could actually talk about the exhibition all nice day pictures. because it's so amazing and where time has run out, I'm afraid. So we want just, uh, Mariana can guide you through those. Those of you who can see you can will now see fast uh, some of the pictures from it. And uh, I don't know if we can have some seconds for Eva to talk about the next steps here or if we will damage the <laughs> schedule totally, uh, because we have also a lot of inspirational things to, to come forward. Is it okay? One minute? Um, so then we have to keep the question yeah. yeah. Uh, Cut okay. it. Well, just, I think this is needed, so take two minutes from there. Yeah. Go, Eva. Uh, for <laughs> me, it's okay to keep yeah. the questions yeah. for a bit. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Now, we have, of course, we are never finished. We are never finished. We can always get better and better and better. And for the next step, uh, we have uh, created new programs for teachers. Uh, now, I see the words are not special. Special teachers, that is, teachers for children with special needs. And uh, we're creating new educational programs for everyone together with those teachers. And uh, also uh, developing and exploring new educational materials to be accessible for all. And we're trying, to, uh, trying out educational content together with these uh, teachers and with the target group too. Um, we improve the interaction with the students and children all the time. Uh, we have special opening hours for schools and children with special needs once a month uh, when they are uh, like VIP customers <laughs> at our house. Uh, we have training for the staff to make sure that everyone knows how to interact with people with different disabilities. Uh, we have a new policy uh, that we're working on right now, launching the next year uh, around uh, accessibility. And we have a brand new website starting up now sometime uh, in a few months, uh, too, that are where we have worked with accessibility, uh, with accessibility professionals actually uh, to design that website and now I need a new picture right and that is this is another way to work uh, with groups that are not able to come to us we have this uh, bus that is a rolling science center on the road 
uh, that we bring out to schools uh, to make sure that schools that are, cannot come to us can take part of the activities uh, that we have in the museum. And that is... Take the next one. Right. Yeah. And uh, as we have taken too much time, I would just sh short say that we continue the work, and I would like to talk more with you about that. But as this, actually, what we do here today is one of those things, because we never be finished with this, right? We always have to carry on and continue the important work to be an inclusive, including place and include everyone in the work. So we do it in a communicative way uh, to reach the target groups, to know that we have done this work, but we'll, because we really need them to come there. We want them to come to, to gr get the joy of it, but also because if they don't come, uh, if you don't tell us what you need and what you want, we can't improve ourselves. And we also want a meeting with you, talk with people, lecture, meet people out in the real world to, to find out what you need and want. So uh, that's also, Eva mentioned briefly about the special days where we have less children and more staff to take, uh, to really get the, the safety of that, the people that maybe need more time and space to get that. And this is an important work. Uh, here I want to just say that we have been uh, nominated and won the award for being the Museum of the Year in Sweden. And we also won several nominations and awards. And why I tell you this is not just because it's really fun and uh, of course we're proud of that. The, the reason I tell you this is that all of the nomination and awards we received, uh, the, the thing with all of them is that every uh, one of them we got because of the work we do with inclusion and accessibility. And that's the great thing for us. And because this is a question of democracy, that's what's important to us. So I hope to inspire some of you. And please come to us. We will be here all day as we didn't. I hope to get more chance to talk with you all. Thank you. Thank you.